Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, with Oxbridge interviews on the horizon, I kind of wanted to move my focus in these videos to be just focusing on the interview side. So today I wanted to go over a good technique that will really impress the interviewers if you can implement it in any of the questions that you get given during the interview. So today we're going to showcase this with a relatively simple question, but it's one that really highlights how to think like a mathematician and what really impresses the interviewers. So the question is simple enough. How many squares can you draw using the corners of the tiles on a chessboard? No diagonals, just squares. So how should you be thinking about this problem? Well, when mathematicians face a big problem like this, with way too many things to try and understand in one go, hell of a lot of squares on this nine by nine grid, it can be quite difficult to work out all those squares. So why not try and break it down into more simpler cases and see if we can spot any patterns. This idea is exactly what interviewers are looking for. Do you have the mathematical intuition to spot any patterns in the smaller cases and then build it up and give an idea for the larger full problem. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started on this question. So the easiest, most simple problem I can think of is a two by two grid of dots. Because now I have very little choice in the squares I can make. There's in fact one, just all the dots, one small square. So the answer to how many squares can I draw in a small two by two grid is just one. Okay, not that complex, but let's step it up and upgrade it to a three by three grid. Suddenly it's a little bit more exciting because now we've got those same two by two squares, but now I can fit four of them in. But then I've also got a much bigger square, a two by two square. So in fact, I've got four little squares and then one bigger square. So already spotted a bit of a pattern there, four small squares, one big square. Okay, let's step it up again. Let's go to a four by four grid. And now looking at the really small squares, well, I can fit one, two, three across and I can fit one, two, three down. So in total, that's nine. And then what about the slightly bigger squares, the two by twos? Well, I can fit one there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, so four of them. And then the bigger squares that now appear, which is a three by three, well, I can fit one of them. So in total, I've got one really big square, four of the smaller squares, but still, still two by twos. And then I've got nine of the much smaller squares, the one by ones. Okay, so in total, that's one plus four plus nine, so that's 14. But I'm starting to see a pattern here because for the two by two, I had one. For the three by three, I had one plus four. For the four by four, I had one plus four plus nine. So I'm starting to see a pattern. I'm essentially adding all the squares together. I'm gonna to hedge my bets and say that for a five by five, we have four squared plus three squared plus two squared plus one squared. All right, let, let's pause for a second. What have we done? We've looked at the really simple cases and we've tried to identify that pattern. I can now see this pattern appearing before me and now I can use that and apply it to the much bigger case because there's no difference between the really small cases and the bigger cases. It's similar here to a proof by induction, not a full proof, I'm just kind of trying to understand the problem by breaking it down into these simpler cases. This idea is really useful for lots of different problems, especially when you've got very large numbers involved. So another example is a past question I've done which is how many zeros in 365 factorial? Breaking it down and thinking about smaller numbers and thinking out where do those zeros come from allows us to build up into the more complex problem. So it's always good to think about the smaller cases and build up to the more complex equations. Okay, so let's bring it back to what we had at the start, which is a grid of nine by nine dots from the original chessboard. Well, now we've got nine by nine dots. So using what I've seen in the smaller cases, well, I just need to think about how many little squares there are, medium squares, bigger squares, bigger squares, and massive squares. And I've already seen how to set that up. Well, the really tiny squares, the one by ones, there'll be eight squared of them, eight along, eight down. The two by twos, there'll be seven squared of them, seven across, seven down. The three by threes, six squared of them. The four by fours, five squared of them. The five by fives, there'll be four squared of them. Six by sixes, there'll be three squared. The seven by sevens, two squared, and finally an eight by eight, that will be one. Now, adding all them up will give us our final solution, 204. So what we did was essentially broke it down into the simpler cases and just built our way up. I didn't have to think too, too detailed about the final grid. Going through and thinking about all the different cases from that final grid might be quite difficult to do, and we might miss some. But thinking about it like this makes it much easier. Now, this is a relatively simple problem, and yeah, you probably could have started with the nine by nine grid and worked out how many squares there are, but that's not the idea. The idea here is to think about splitting it up into those simpler cases. Lots of different questions you can just do by looking at the final problem, but to try and get an idea and understanding of what's going on, we wanna break it down into those simpler cases and try and spot some patterns. 
it will make it easier in the long run. So next time you get stuck on one of these, try and think what's the simpler version of this? How can I make a simple case? And then see if I can spot anything by looking at those really simple cases. How did I do it for a two by two? Well, I thought about the really small squares and then the bigger squares. Can I do that for the nine by nine? And that's really good for mathematical intuition. How can you apply a small problem to a much bigger problem? So that's just a little bit of a tip I thought would be really, really useful for these interviews coming up. Because a lot of interview questions do actually rely on this kind of idea of simple cases. In the meantime, if you've got any questions or any problems that you think would be really good applied to this, please leave them in the comments below. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.